Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Orbital 2006 briefing. Uh, my name is Min. Uh, you'll see me a lot if you take Orbital because I am uh, in the one one of the two coordinators in charge. Wee Sun, who's our Dean of Undergraduate Studies, is in the back. He's also a co-coordinator of this module. I say module in quotations because it's not really a module. But I'll wait for you guys to calm down a little bit before I talk. Okay, we are actually going to record the session, so you'll be able to watch this on YouTube if you have friends who didn't manage to make it down. Okay, and the slides are available. They're at Bitly. They're actually Google Drive slides, so you can go to them. Okay, uh, it's hard to talk over you, so I thought I'd show you a video first. What's making this drone fly? Not a remote control gizmo, but computer code. Where is the volume for this? Sound is yeah. Okay, maybe I'll try to do it this way. Big right now, says Flatiron co-founder and Dean Avi Flambaum, and it'll be even bigger in the future, with growth in coding jobs forecast to be double that of job growth overall. There is just such a demand for these kind of skills uh, that, you know, if you are competent and you're passionate about this and you are a self-driven person, there are uh, more opportunities than we can possibly fill. Twelve weeks of immersive coding, no experience required, at a cost of twelve to $15,000. But at the end, 99% of Flatiron graduates get jobs as developers, making on average $74,000 a year to start. Armando Amador graduated a year ago after losing his marketing design job in 2013. I remember being unemployed and I couldn't find anything. I couldn't find not even an interview. Uh, people would not respond back to emails. And once I finished the program and I changed my job title to uh, software engineer, just like that same hour, my inbox was full of messages just like, People send you emails and calling you. How did you feel? I felt like I was on top of the mountain. I just felt like powerful. Like, where were you guys a couple months ago when I was looking for a job? At Manhattan startup Wizard Development, Amador now makes double what he used to. It's jobs like his that drew current student Geraldina Garcia to Flatirons. She dropped out of college to attend. I kind of got into the tech industry and realized how unimportant a college degree really is. Garcia, who'd majored in computer science, joins a growing chorus of those questioning the value of a degree from a traditional four-year university, especially if it means assuming debt. A lot of my friends that graduated this past year and the year before are still looking for jobs. I think part of the reason for that is is that they know a lot of the theory, but they don't have hands-on experience. Maybe that's why college didn't work out for classmate Liwa Bamod. I uh, took two intro to programming classes at the University of Michigan. I failed the first time, and then I failed again the second time. I thought, I'm not a programmer, I'm definitely not cut out for this. But he went online, started learning how to code on his own, then applied to Flatiron. Why go to college for four years and work up a corporate ladder um, to get in the position to do something great when you can just learn to create something great? Now, the dropout in code approach isn't for everyone. After all, the unemployment rate for those without a traditional college degree is double the rate of those who've graduated. Moreover, few applicants get into Flatiron at the moment. Its 6% acceptance rate rivals Harvard's. But, insists founder Flambaum, literally anyone can learn to code. So right now, we're looking at your website, Making Sense. You can view the page's source and immediately see the source code Oh that is goodness. describing the instructions to the browser for how to make your page look. Uh, and if I want, I can change this text to say, Welcome to Flatiron School, Paul. I see. These are just all instructions. Everything, yeah, that's what code is, just instructions. Okay, so I wanted to show you this. Uh, not to encourage you to drop out of the school of computing, 
right? But more to say that, you know, well, you're in the school of computing and you're learning the algorithmic basics through data structures and introduction to programming, you actually have a really valuable opportunity to do something of your own design and still get course credit for it. So um, you may have seen quite a lot of social media posts about coding schools, right? Boot camps and say, anyone can code. And that's really true. If you saw the video just now, you saw the founder saying, anyone can learn how to code. Okay? So not just computer scientists, anyone at the university level and even below that or above that can learn how to code. And uh, you know, these coding boot camps are becoming so popular now, but they're really, really expensive. Okay, and what we've decided to do in the School of Computing is to let you code on your own, so to speak, by doing a project of your own design that you care about, okay, um, and get course credit for it, okay. While you're doing this project, you're going to pick up skills on the way, because the truth is, a lot of the technology for doing real-world programming out there is already on the web, okay. You just have to have the initiative to find it, right, and then put it together. A lot of Programming in the wild or programming in day-to-day -day jobs is cutting and pasting various libraries to get in, together to get them to work. Okay, so uh, this is the opportunity that we hope to give you through Orbital. So what are we going to talk about today? Uh, we're going to talk about the types of projects you can do under Orbital. Uh, we're going to talk about the timeline for getting things done in Orbital, about the peer evaluation process, so if any of you have heard of MOOCs or Massive Online Open Courses, this is the course in the School of Computing that's most structured like that, okay? And then we're going to talk about optional mentorship for those of you who think maybe they'd like a little bit of a hand-holding in, in their summer experience. And then we're very privileged today to have people from NOC, NUS OACs Colleges, and the alumni from Orbital to come back and tell you about this program. So, okay, what is Orbital anyways, right? Basically, it's a chance for you over the summer from May until August to do something that you always wanted to do, all right? Maybe it's to learn a particular language, maybe it's to uh, build a, a project for a friend of yours or to um, itch some uh, desire that you wanted to fix, all right? Uh, you can do all of those under Orbital. The only caveat is it has to be computing-centric, okay? Something involving code, all right? So you can try to solve your own problems. We see maybe about a third of the cohort in Orbital tries to do something aligned to NUS students, okay? Like a, a module mapper, a timetabler, meetup uh, planner, okay? Or maybe you have some personal interest which you wanted to tackle. Like you haven't had a chance to do mobile app development or game development, but you wanted to try that. Or you're really interested in this, what's the new buzzword of Internet of Things or data analytics, okay? We can help you design a project around that, okay? Uh, you also may know there are lots and lots of competitions out these days. You hear about hackathons all the time. You know, wouldn't it be nice if I could put on my resume, I won a hackathon, right? Wow, that would be good. I could get that as a resume builder, all right? And our, our, our alumni from Orbital have done exactly that, actually. We have one here is a multi-award uh, uh, winner, okay? But the whole point about this is that you can spend part of your Orbital experience just preparing for some of these hackathons and, you know, putting in a better entry than you would otherwise if you only had 24 hours, okay? Could also be, you know, something more embedded, something more hardware-oriented, so if you like uh, Mindstorms labels or Arduino or Raspberry Pi, you never had a chance to do that, okay? These devices are pretty cheap now, right? Or you have a, a, a smartwatch. You were thinking, wouldn't it be cool if I knew how to program a smartwatch? It's not hard to do, it just takes time, okay? So we're giving you time to do it, and we're gonna give you course credit for it, okay? So you can do any of these different types of projects under Orbital, okay? It's not just meant for CS folks, it's meant for IS folks, for VZA folks, for information security folks, anyone in our school. So, um, some of you may have heard of level of achievements in Orbital. Can I have a show of hands who's heard of that? A couple people? All right, so let me explain this to you. 
Orbital has three levels of achievement. Okay, they're listed there. The top one is called Vostok, it's for the Russian space program, uh, and then Project Gemini, which is our intermediate level, and uh, Apollo 11, which is our advanced level. Okay, uh, these levels of achievements just give us some understanding about what level of uh, project you want to do. Okay, you can complete a very basic project, especially let's say you're not really sure what to do. Okay, we're going to start you off with a web development project. Okay, and if you decide, oh, actually that was easier than I thought it would be, let me try intermediate level. Okay, you can ramp that up a little bit, build a little bit more functionality, and then you'll be entitled for. Project Gemini, okay, the second level of pass. Okay, the higher levels of achievement, you have to do more in your own project, but critically, you also have to do more for other people's projects, okay? Because in this course, we're not building our own projects in a void. We're building them together with all of the other classmates in this room, okay? So you're going to be assigned to peer teams to help each other evaluate your projects to tell how you can improve those projects over time, okay? So in the higher levels of achievement, you actually have to do more to critique how to improve other people's projects, okay? And uh, that means just as a customer, not meaning you need to know some technical details how to do it, just like, oh, I think it would be nice if you had this functionality, or maybe you don't need this button there, or the text looks really bad, maybe you want to change the font to something else, okay? All of those are good ways of critiquing a project. Okay? Now, let me emphasize, if you do Orbital, all of you, irrespective of what level of achievement you get, you get your four MCs worth of credit. Okay? SU credit, usually counted as UE, unrestricted electives. Okay? So, the level of achievement is nothing else than a mechanism for bragging rights. Okay? If you achieve Apollo 11, you know, your, your classmates will say, oh, wow, he really did it. Good job of Apollo 11, you know, because you got all the way up there, right? Okay? And it, it does make a difference, as you'll find from NLC later, they take this uh, platform very seriously for uh, seeding you to go overseas for exchange. Alright? So, what level of achievement you end up getting depends on what you are able to finish at the end of the summer, okay? Uh, by August. But it helps us to know ahead of time what you're planning to do. So when you register for Orbital, you have to tell us what level you're thinking of doing. Okay. So I said you can do anything you want as long as it's computing related. Many of these students say, I don't know what I want to do, but I saw from the video that a lot of people are interested in building web applications, right? These are basically just uh, software applications that happen to exist on the web. You know, they can create data, they can replace data, they can delete data, okay, just like Ivy or any other um, uh, type of uh, user-generated content application. And we're going to do this in Python and Google App Engine. Okay? This is the basic project that we have you do at Vostok level, the beginner level. Okay? For someone experienced, doing a project like this would take about one day. Okay? But because many of us don't have the background for it, we don't know how the web works. Okay? It's going to take a long time for you to come to that understanding. It could take you a couple months. All right? So what we'll, we will do is help you a little bit to get started on this project. But let me make it clear. We are not lecturing for this course. Okay? What we are doing is giving you an opportunity to pick these skills up on your own. Okay? With help from a partner. Okay? Because actually... As you've heard from many of your videos, anyone can code. And that's no, uh, no better true than for competing students, right? We should be able to code. Okay? So we're going to teach you a little bit of Python. It's a very simple language. Maybe many of you have heard of it or used it. In fact, it's now on the curriculum for H3 uh, in Singapore. And then uh, Google App Engine, which is a really, really easy framework for web development but it has quite a lot of limitations, okay? So uh, we're gonna teach you this just because it's very easy to teach, not because it's particularly good. Although it does run a lot of things. For example, in software engineering, you may uh, run into teammates. It's a system created in the school computing using Google App Engine. 
Okay? If you happen to go for the intermediate or uh, higher levels of achievement, you might find that uh, these choices are a bit restrictive. You can try something else. Okay? I'll talk about that later. So here's how it works. Uh, maybe some of you remember that I came to your classes uh, for uh, CS1101, uh, uh, 1010 or 1020, 2020. Okay? I told you then that I came to give you uh, the roadshow briefing because the 9th and the 10th of May, you're required to be in NUS. Okay? This is when we have our mandatory workshop. It's going to give you a taste of the technologies. Okay? Most people, after this workshop, they come away completely lost, okay? But after that, they can have the information to go and learn off the basics, okay? They know where to go. That's the important part, okay? Then, over the course of the summer, pretty much every month, May, June, and July, at the end of the month, there is an evaluation milestone, okay? That is going to help you form your project a little more, okay? What do I mean by that? Well, in the first month, you have to think about the project you want to do. You have to ideate about it, decide what types of features, it is, what audience does it reach. Okay? In the second milestone in June, you start to build some basic functionality. Try to prototype it, get your hands around the technology. And in the third milestone, to extend that, maybe to take some of the peer feedback that your peers have given you and say, maybe you should build this type of function or that type of functionality and add that into your application. Okay? Or whatever type of project you're doing. Okay? And then at the beginning of the semester, probably around week two of SEM 1 next year, August 17th, which is a Wednesday, we'll be meeting here in SR1 and outside SR1 for a splashdown. Okay? You've seen some pictures of it before. Basically, it's a big poster session. We go around telling each other what we did over the summer. And we have a nice time with food, sometimes, and with prizes, definitely. Okay, from Google uh, to, to add that to the mix. Okay, now we realize that it's hard for people to do things over the summer, right? Uh, many of us go on vacation. A lot of our students are not from Singapore. So, uh, Orbital is structured in such a way to allow for that. The only thing you have to do, again, is to attend the mandatory 9th and 10th of May workshop and be around during the second week of SEM 1 next year. Okay? However, for those of you who happen to be in Singapore, we also will have a couple other workshops that will happen in May and June, okay? They're going to help you decide the technology platform you want to use for your project, okay? Because in the liftoff workshop, we can only go over a limited amount of technology. We're going to cover, again, Python and Google App Engine. But there are other frameworks that you can use. So, for example, if you wanted to use game development, you might think about Unity or Pygame. If you wanted to do web application development, Python and Google App Engine isn't usually the first choice. Something like Ruby on Rails might be popular. And if you're doing uh, mobile development, you might consider doing uh, iOS in terms of C Sharp or Swift. So all of these other languages and uh, frameworks, we will have a chance to go over in these other optional tutorials, okay? They will look like this this year. This is different from the previous batches. So what we're going to do is try to structure them in one day. So you can come in the afternoon. We'll have one, an, an hour workshop at the beginning. And we'll have time for you and your teammate to come together, hack on your project. Okay? Then hopefully later on in the evening, we'll have some food that's going to be sponsored uh, by Google. And then uh, a second workshop. Okay? So we want to make it a meaningful afternoon, evening, you come back to the school, uh, either on a weekday or a weekend, okay, depending on everyone's availability, to come and learn some alternate technologies. Okay? So these, again, will be teasers. They'll just give you an introductory introduction to those technologies, and you guys can then decide, oh, that sounds good. Maybe I want to do a project on Node.js okay, or React.js. So I alluded to the fact that there are three milestones, right? One in May for ideation, one in June for prototyping, and one in July for extension. Each of these milestones is not graded by us, okay? It's graded by all of you. How does it work? Well, what we're going to do is going to ask you to compile some documentation that your peers will be using 
to decide what level of achievement you're currently aiming to get. Okay? So when you uh, come to the end of May, you're going to have to create uh, a short text file, a readme, uh, a log stating how many hours you and your partners have contributed to the project so far, and a short 30 second to one minute video about your idea. Okay? And you're going to turn that into our platform called Skylab. Maybe some of you have used it for registration. Okay? And then your peers will be allowed access to that. They'll have to watch all of these videos uh, and read your readme and look at your project log and decide, okay, I think this team is on target. I think they can make it. I think they're going to get to the end of August and we're going to see some interesting results. Okay? So you can think about it like that. When you're preparing your milestones uh, documentation, you will have access to the evaluation criteria that your peers are going to use to grade you. Okay? So please check the criteria when you're preparing so that you know what type of documentation to put in your milestones. So one week later, you're going to have to be assessing all of your peer projects. So you're going to be in teams of four. Okay? Meaning, uh, your team of two students will be paired up with three other teams. Okay? And so these three other teams, you will have to evaluate okay? using the same criteria. So there will be a form that's presented to you. You can fill that out with your check marks, your uh, grading. Okay? And then uh, that will be provided anonymously back to the teams uh, that did that project. Okay? What's really helpful here is if you can make your feedback useful, right? If you say nothing else but, yeah, it looks fine, keep on going, you know, that's pretty much not giving any feedback at all, okay? So the more constructive you can make your feedback, the more valued it is going to be to the teams that are doing their project, okay? And in fact, as I alluded to before, higher level of achievements in Orbital are premised on this, okay? Not only doing a good job of your own project, but being able to give pointers, directions and, and uh, ideas for other people to improve their projects. There may be some times which you wish to give negative feedback. You might say, you know, um, you know, your project is really not working out, but you don't want to get uh, backlash, right? So if they knew who you were, that would be a problem, okay? So uh, you can give negative feedback. Uh, to a team, but it will be anonymized uh, and separately given. Okay. Now, in Orbital, we also have a very elite team of students, which I can't show you today, I think, because um, it's not working. But let me see what it is. Yeah, it's not working. Okay. Um, we have uh, about 20 students from Orbital 2015 and 2014 who are going to be your advisors, okay? They're the official voice of the course, and they're going to be grading each one of your projects directly, okay? Giving the same type of peer feedback as you give to your peer teams, okay? So um, they will be uh, also giving you constructive feedback on your projects during the three milestones. Okay, for the final milestone in Milestone 3, which happens in late July, a couple of days after the peer evaluation, we also have feedback on the peer evaluation. All right, what does this mean? It means basically that the feedback that you received from other teams make a difference to you. Okay, this is where we give kudos back to the other people who've helped make our project better. Okay, so we are going to look at all the feedback that, let's say, Team B gave to me, Team A. And I'm going to say, Team B, great job. You helped me make my project better. You gave me some ideas. You pointed me to some libraries, and I was able to do a better project for that. Thank you. Okay, so when you do that, you help us validate that these other teams are making good on their promise, okay, to help you create a better project. For the higher levels of achievement, okay, intermediate and advanced, you also have a really great opportunity to try to get a mentor. Okay? 
A mentor is basically a senior student in the school or an alumni who's already working in industry, um, who has volunteered their time to help make a difference in your project. Okay? So they're willing to help you uh, on your project, willing to help you network with other people okay, to get your project the right exposure or the right expertise. Okay? This can help a lot, especially for those of you who are looking to get internships in uh, the, the subsequent summers. Okay? So uh, mentors are a good way of networking with the wider population in the School of Computing and our alumni. Okay? So if you want to take up a mentorship, uh, basically they'll pro be provided access to your project documentation and they will meet with you uh, either virtually uh, through email or teleconference or physically if you happen to be in Singapore okay, to guide you on your project. Now, as I said at the beginning, we want this summer to be a project of your own device, meaning you have your own idea of what you want to do and you execute it with guidance from your peers and guidance from your advisors. Okay? But we realize some of you may not have particular projects in mind. Right? Maybe you just want to get enough experience so you can grab that you know, first good internship. All right? In those cases, sometimes a mentor can help you. They can say, well, I have this idea for a project. Maybe you want to try that out. Okay? But let me make it clear. This type of project idea proposed by a mentor is not an internship. It wouldn't be fair to you. Why? Because internships are paid, right? You get money for internships, right? This is not paid. This is your summer project, okay? So, let's make that very clear. You can take a project devised by a mentor if you'd like, but you shouldn't treat it as an internship. It should be something that you also find passion to do, okay? Now, why do we make mentorship only available to um, intermediate and advanced level people? Because we need to ensure that if you're taking Orbital, all right, that you can complete this project, okay, such that the mentor is not wasting their effort, right? As I told you in the roadshows before, if you take Orbital, it's at no risk to you. If you decide halfway through the summer, oh, I got busy, I don't have time anymore. I'm going to drop Orbital. There's no problem. It never appears on your transcript, okay, in that case. All right? So it's at no cost to you to try out Orbital, see whether you have the time commitment to do it. But when you take a mentor, now you're involving someone else's time, okay? So we need to try to ensure that those mentors who are giving their time, volunteering their time to help you, have something to say, you know, that they mentored a team and they completed a project, okay? So here's a, a mentor, for example, I just pulled out one from last year. So this is Calvin Cheng. Uh, he's a very well-known software developer in our community here in Singapore. He knows so many different things. Uh, he's a Swift developer, uh, does a lot of Python and, and Ruby. And uh, he's working right now, quite interestingly, in the healthcare domain. And he mentored a team last year, and uh, Nicholas from last year said, Calvin not only gave great advice for our Orbital project, but has been an excellent mentor in terms of getting myself to become a better developer. He has given me invaluable device, advice, and I'm sure you'll not regret having him as your mentor. Okay, so Calvin is interested in mobile app development and iOS, or so you know Swift, so if you wanted to learn Swift, you could work with him. He's working on an ophthalmology app, as well as a mobile app for caregivers. You know, so if any of these types of applications seem interesting to you, uh, you might approach him for mentorship. Okay? We're going to have around uh, 10 to 15 mentors this year. So later when uh, we do the list off workshop, you'll hear more about the potential mentors that are available to you. I'm just giving a sample. Okay. Now, uh, Skylab, when it is working, today it's not, but uh, uh, you can register for Orbital. How many of you have registered for Orbital already? Any number of you? Okay. So the rest of you haven't yet. Uh, again, it's no cost to you. You can just register. It's just a registration of interest. If you register and you're a school of competing student, you know, as uh, any one of our degrees, 
then you're automatically into the cohort. If there are a couple of you here who are interested in enrolling, but not from the school competing, you'll be placed on a waiting list. We hold about 10% of the cohort out for other faculty to uh, take. Okay, so what you'll need to do is follow the video. There's a, a video for registration. I think in the interest of time, I won't go over it. But basically, you have to go to Skylab, log in using your NUS net address, fill in the registration form, and that will complete your registration process for individual registration. Now, Orbital has to be done in a team of two, okay? Exactly two, so you cannot work as a single person, you cannot work as a team of three, okay? So if you already know who you want to work with, you can follow the other three steps at the bottom, okay? Invite a teammate via their registered email address, and in the other teammate's account, accept the invitation, and then you'll be finished. Okay, so I'm going to hand it over now to Joe from NOC, who will give you uh, what goes on from Orbital afterwards. It may not make a whole lot of sense yet, but trust me, keep this in the back of your mind as you go forward. Okay, hi everyone, I'm Josephine from NOC. Uh, firstly, I'd like to just thank uh, Prof. Lee and Prof. Khan for give us, uh, giving us this time to actually share with you guys this awesome NOC program that we have. Okay, uh, later on, uh, I'll introduce you to two of our NOC alumni who are also from computing and also alumni of the Orbiter program. Uh, they will share with you guys on their experiences over in New York as well as in Silicon Valley itself. Okay, okay uh, firstly, I need to actually probably ask you guys uh, who has actually signed up for Friends of NOC? Oh, no hands up, right? <laughs> so few. Okay, anyone from other faculty other than computing, engineering, or things like that? No? Okay, good. Uh, okay, anyway, uh, uh, just to start off, um, just to let you guys know that, okay, for NLC internship program, why is it so different from the, the normal internship? Because um, we actually place students in a startup environment. Um, the reason why we actually place you, you guys in a startup environment is because we want um, you guys to actually work closely with the founders or co-founders of the company, as well as to actually you know um, further um, in terms of your skill set and all that and learn more other than you know being in just part in a big company where you're just working on probably one scope of you know uh, a, a job. So in a startup environment, you actually get exposed to things like, uh, for example, right now you guys are actually doing more programming, coding work. You will also get exposed to the business aspect of the company, which is something that you may or may not actually learn through the course of your computing and study. Okay, we actually have seven um, locations itself. Uh, you can see that um, okay, Singapore, we have ILEAD. Uh, this particular program is actually a uh, six, six to seven months program. So same thing, uh, you actually park in a startup company locally in Singapore. And then thereafter, you, at the end of your internship, you actually go for a two weeks overseas mission. Okay, um, you'll be actually visiting some of the startups overseas. Um, so far, the students have gone to Silicon Valley, Israel, uh, New York, Chile, all that. Okay, and the other places that you, you notice, okay, we actually have six months program and year long program. So the six months program are actually in Beijing and Israel itself. All right, and uh, Beijing itself is unique. We actually have both uh, six months and year long program. Okay, uh, this year itself, we are starting um, for six months program, is actually credit bearing. So no longer on leave of absence, all right? So yeah, earning credits uh, while on NOC program. Okay, uh, okay. Uh, this is just a timeline to show to you guys that uh, how far we have gone. We started in 2002 in Silicon Valley itself, and then right now the latest is actually our New York program. Okay, other than you know your internship, you also get to actually do some part-time studies in um, these uh, renowned uh, universities that you can see over there, okay? Okay, what's in for you? Okay, basically, uh, the internship will be the basis of it, and then uh, you study part-time in the university itself, and also you actually get to actually uh, advise and work with uh, industry mentors. So they're actually mentors in, in the industry who have been having a lot of experience uh, who will be able to actually provide you the guidance as well. Okay, 
And um, besides that, um, you are also earning a stipend every month. So you, if this stipend itself is actually more or less enough to cover for your accommodation as well as your daily expenses. So do not worry too much about the finances. Because other than the stipend that you are getting, um, we do actually have some uh, awards or scholarship that you guys can apply for as well to help out in terms of your finances. Okay, uh, okay, the good news is that uh, right now, for, we have uh, NOC has worked with computing and um, the good thing is that um, it's actually curriculum integration. Why I mentioned that later, I'll show you a table on um, the, the uh, curriculum <coughs> inter integration on that. Okay, um, for computing students, uh, you guys are quite lucky. Actually, in fact, uh, all the NOC locations, I would say, there are actually relevant internship available for you guys. Okay, some of the scope that we are looking at uh, can be front-end, back-end uh, developer, um, product uh, management, and a wide range. So you guys, I would say that uh, I'm actually well sought after in all the locations as well. Okay, uh, I mentioned just now about the curriculum integration. Okay, so you can um, see from the table itself, uh, from the various departments, um, right now, it's actually um, you can tell you can see that for the year long program itself, we actually have a very good mapping um, with the computing modules, and also you can actually map to uh, fulfill your ATAC, your industrial attachment uh, internship portion, which is compulsory. Okay. Okay, this one's for engineering itself. Okay, uh, here are some actually some sample internships that we have over here. It's, uh, it's just a sample for you guys to take a look. So um, you can see that it's a bit small, but you can see that the requirements are actually in terms of uh, programming. And um, some of the programming languages are Python, HTML, and, and all these that you probably will have learned while in computing itself. Okay. Okay, uh, also the other thing uh, which Prof Tan mentioned just now is that uh, for OBTs who are actually in their intermediate and advanced level, you guys can actually skip round one and you'll go directly to a round two interview. So uh, generally, um, a normal applicant will have to go through two rounds, but OBTs itself, uh, you can actually go for round two if you are in an intermediate or advanced level. Okay? Okay, uh, we hope that you guys one day will also become famous like um, some of our NOC alumni have gone on the program and they have started their own company. If you do have some, um, probably Carousel, 99.co, all these are quite uh, known. Probably you guys have probably sell or buy something from Carousel as well, right? Okay, so these are actually uh, NOC alumni, uh, NUS students who have gone on NOC and they have started out. And uh, some of them, I would say that they are actually multi uh, million and um, Okay, so hopefully one day you guys will be one of them. Okay. Okay, other than um, NOC journey itself, uh, it doesn't stop there. So actually after when you return from NOC program or while on NOC program, if you do have a business idea that you wish to develop and you wish to start up, uh, we do actually have all these uh, services actually provided for you guys. If you guys have gone to IQ building itself, uh, over at level 1, we have actually a new incubator over there called the Hangar. So it's actually, um, you, you, if you guys are keen and uh, you guys would like to actually have a space there, you can actually talk to, um, to our colleagues from the NUS Enterprise. Or you can write to us, we can actually link you guys up with them. So there are actually available grants funding on that. Yeah. Okay. Okay, um, so if you guys have any questions that you'd like to ask us, you can actually write in to us or give us a call. Or if uh, you guys have not actually signed up for, uh, for Friends of NOC, you guys can also do so. You can actually email us and we will open up the link for you guys to actually sign up. Actually, in fact, uh, sometime in April or May itself, we're actually conducting the interviews for Year 1 students. Yeah. So if you guys are keen within this week itself or next week, you can actually drop us a mail. Then we can actually uh, open up the application for you guys. All right? Okay. Okay. So um, I've um, let me introduce you to Ming Yang, who has actually gone on our Silicon Valley program. He will share with you more about his life in a startup in SE.
the animation doesn't work. Yeah. 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 Oh, we go. Uh, hi guys, my name is Ming Yang. Uh, I'm a final year computer science student. So I'm very glad to be here to share my experience with you because I'm also uh, the alumni of Orbital Program uh, 2013. 20? Uh, yeah, 2013. It was the first batch uh, of Orbital, and I and my team was the uh, top prize winner of uh, Orbital 2013. So, uh, so I'm very excited to be here again. Uh, after my Orbital program, I uh, applied. Uh, this uh, program called over U.S. Overseas College. Then I went. To, I am. Very, I was very lucky to uh, got the chance to uh, go to uh, Silicon Valley. So at that moment, I was interning at a uh, Silicon Valley based company called Easily Do. Uh, basically, they are doing something like Google Now. It's a, a mobile personal assistant which like uh, analyze your emails, your Facebook social networking data to like uh, remind you what you need to do today or what you need to do uh, recently. So uh, I was uh, iOS uh, and web developer at that company. Uh, what I do uh, mention is uh, Orbital will be a very good chance for you to grab some uh, technical skills uh, during your uh, the first summer. Uh, because uh, after this summer, maybe you will be looking for internship, maybe you uh, will be looking for some opportunities, but you know the industry prefer, always prefer people who have uh, similar uh, experience. So I benefit from Orbital a lot because at that moment, uh, my team was uh, doing a project which is a event, uh, event uh, platform like Eventbrite, but with some social features. So I learned, uh, but I have never taken any iOS uh, course in the US and other places. But I learned, I learned uh, Objective C and iOS development by myself uh, during Orbital program. So that's why I should go to Silicon Valley, go to this company uh, to do iOS development. So you don't have to take any course to learn those. You can do those by yourself. So I would say this is a great chance for you uh, to grab some uh, technical skills uh, before uh, looking for your internship. So uh, our company was based in Mountain View, uh, and the company uh, was founded since 2012. So at the moment, uh, when I just uh, arrived there, uh, the Apple Watch was just released. So I was very lucky. My company uh, asked me to uh, develop the first Apple Watch app for my company. So uh, after uh, on the first day of the release, our our Apple Watch app was featured uh, on. Uh, app store, so it was great. Uh, Hans is uh, very excited because this is my first project, and also it's totally done by myself, and it got featured by Apple. So I was very happy and excited at that moment. Uh, then Apple invited us to go to uh, WWDC 2015. So I represented my company to uh, attend this uh, uh, this event. So it uh, was a fantastic opportunity for me. Then besides uh, the internship, we also got a chance to uh, study at Stanford. Uh, so, but if you go to because we have seven locations, uh, if you go to uh, other uh, college, you also get chance to uh, study at the partners university. So in Silicon Valley, you get chance to study at Stanford. But what we majorly, uh, largely uh, studying is about entrepreneurship and marketing also NLC, uh, also allows you to uh, take two discipline based uh, modules uh, you could you can take like computer science or information system modules at Stanford it's with real Stanford students so uh, so if because previously we were kind of worried about our uh, credits because we know NLC is more about entrepreneurship so but however because you can take uh, some uh, discipline-based modules. So uh, most of us uh, didn't uh, delay our graduation. So that's pretty good. Also in Stanford, uh, we participated a competition called the Stanford Business Challenge, which is, which is like uh, 
Stanford's uh, startup at Singapore competition. So it's a uh, startup competition. And we got, uh, we were lucky, we got into the finalists uh, and we met a lot of uh, awesome developers, students, and entrepreneurs over there. And all the, yeah, this photo was taken uh, during the basic challenge. Uh, it's my team. Uh, also, uh, there are many hackathons uh, in Valley every day. So if you are passionate about like making, uh, developing new software, uh, those hackathons will be a great place for you because you can t attend a lot of hackathons. Almost every day there is hackathon. Uh, this is. This is uh, in Berkeley. We went to uh, Berkeley. There was a hackathon called CalHack. Uh, they have they hold this hackathon every year. Almost like more than one thousand uh, students will go to uh, participate in hackathon. So this hackathon is much bigger than any hackathon in Singapore. So, but this, this normal is very common in Silicon Valley. Uh, also, this is uh, we visited Google. Of course, it's nothing special because almost every every uh, person uh, go to uh, Silicon Silicon Valley will visit Google. But the the good thing is in Silicon Valley you can visit a lot of uh, well known and awesome startups like Dropbox, uh, Twitter, Google, Apple, any startups, any good companies. Uh, also, I was lucky. I also got a chance to uh, attend a uh, Facebook conference. I, that was my first time to try Oculus and some some related features. Uh, also, because you can get a chance to learn uh, study at Stanford, so I attend my. Uh, it was a team project. I attend my uh, teammates' uh, graduation ceremony. So uh, besides uh, internship and. Entrepreneurial uh, tech uh, experience. Uh, your life is not just like this. Uh, what I my a part of my life is about traveling because no one will refuse traveling. So I this is uh, in Washington University. It's mm, one of my favorite campus. It's very very beautiful. This is Seattle. Uh, this is in Louisiana. It's called French Square. So all photos are taken by myself. Uh, also, this one, if you know Mac OS, you will know this is uh, Yosemite. But this photo is taken by myself, so you will know how beautiful the view over there is. Uh, and also, my first time uh, I saw galaxies. Also, the <laughs> a big part of my life is Disneyland, uh, because I'm very, I like it very much. So I bought an annual pass of Disneyland. I went there about like uh, almost 10 times uh, in a year. I went to Disneyland and as well as Disney World. Uh, <laughs> so I did a calculation uh, just now. I went to uh, about 10 states uh, and almost like 15 different major cities in US. So the experience was awesome, uh, and uh, it's unforgettable. So if you are looking for uh, internship opportunity, looking for like study uh, at overseas university, or you're looking for maybe you're interested in startups or entrepreneurship, I would say this is a fantastic opportunity because your internship is not you will get paid for your internship, and also the salary will, will cover all of your living costs. If you are not like traveling a lot, you will save a lot of money at the end. So I would highly recommend this program to you. Uh, and this program is designed for you guys. Yeah, that's my experience. Thank you. OK, thank you. OK, so whenever Minyang has mentioned, I also went to their research site. They like travel from New York City to San Francisco while traveling. So traveling is part of the, the master. OK, so I'm Jensen. So I'm uh, currently studying in like, the final year, uh, information system. So what I did in New York is uh, a company called Algoro. So what Algoro did is, it's a natural language processing company that process large volume of uh, news articles from financial uh, institutions like Bloomberg, like Control Riders. So what we do, we provide summaries. So for those financial analysts where they need to read news every day, so we provide that kind of tools that they can read. Like example, a particular news maybe about Donald Trump, 
then there's 200 over articles about Donald Trump. So you don't need to read the whole 200 articles, just read the summary that we provide using the natural risk processing algorithm that we built uh, in this company. So what I did in, uh, uh, in, in Agoro is, is exactly what I did in Orbiter. Like I use, because at the start when I came into this company, they use Python, Django Python. So Orbiter, they use Python. So at the start, they teach Python. So it's very good. Uh, so when you apply for this kind of company, like regardless of which program you use, like as you just learn multiple languages like Python, uh, Node.js, it's a good start where you will see that, and especially Orbiter, okay, why you should join Orbiter? Because the more reason, it's only offered to year one student, right? Yeah, so once you, let's say you are going year two, you can't join. So you want to bet or whatever, do whatever you can join. So, uh, like what Min Yang, uh, together with Min Yang, oh, we are the first batch of Orbiter, join Orbiter. Because I, when I saw that, I was quite happy because if I, if they started in 2014, I can't join. So that's the thing that you think. So in some, in some ways, Orbiter is free. So let's join, I mean, let's join. So that's the good thing. I mean, in nothing, there's no thing in loss. Because if you go to the US side, like, those people that want to learn coding, like, they need to spend thousands of dollars. Like why those code academy, like uh, assembly, uh, code assembly or whatever, they, they have to spend like, uh, for what I know, it's about nearly more than the school fee that you pay, like in Singapore or whatever. And it's quite expensive if you want to learn. And, also, those things you learn like, is more practical, not so much of the like, CS 1010, 1020, where they learn the foundation. Because those people that go for those code academy, they don't have that foundation, like for OM, or the what, trees, algorithm, those things they don't understand. Because they don't have that foundation. They just learn the, how to use Node.js, how to use to be on Rails. So that's the reason why you should go for this Orbiter program. And it's good, uh, because I, I want to do something like Orbiter, then I want to do something I can apply. So, actually Orbiter plus NOC is actually a good combination, where you learn from yourself, and in the NOC, you also need to learn yourself, because uh, although like, the startup founders, they able to help you, like guide you, but they, have, they are busy with their own startup, they need to develop their company. So this is what I learned, like, uh, what you can learn in Orbiter, and also in like, NOC. So what, this one is mine. Uh, so this company is only, uh, when I came there, it's only four people. Two founders and two employees. So I'm the third, third employees, uh, third intern. Uh, although they have many interns, but I'm so-called the third person there during that time. So it's, I mean, it's good because we have, to be honest, uh, actually all are developers, all are, uh, have code background. So uh, my CEO, which is called uh, is Sage, is who at work time as engineers. Then for CTO, uh, uh, Muhammad, he is now he's a PhD uh, in uh, natural language processing. So he started up with his thesis projects, I think, yeah. So, uh, so what you can see then for other colleagues, like uh, this Julian, so he's a product designer. Then also on the extreme left is um, called uh, William, which is machine learning developer. So you can see like, I only had five people, only five in, like only got four people in the team, like, right? Uh, the good thing is, if I need any help, I don't know certain things, I just need to, because the room is very small, so I just ask like, each person, uh, how do I do this, how do I do that, so we have all that, I can learn from any of the, like, if you need front end help, you ask the product designer, if you need back end help, you ask the machine learning developer, so if you need any entrepreneur help, you can ask the CEO, if you need any other help, you can ask the CTO, so it's good that you work in startup, you can work, you can get support, it's like, same as what Orbiter has done, like the mentorship, so this one is, I get four mentors. Then one, two, three, yeah, four mentors yeah, at this company. So this is good in the sense. And what, so this is the product that uh, my company did, which is, so my role in this company is, uh, because I specialize in JavaScript. So in this company, they lack JavaScript. So they have front-end, back-end, but they don't have a JavaScript developer. So I'm the one that integrate front-end and back-end together and make the user experience better. So that time they started as Python, but as they as we use Python I, because we are processing a very large volume of data. And when they start to load, this has a problem in the loading because it's very slow. Because you have to display uh, real time data in uh, so so from that uh, a big task like after I learned because Python I although I learned in computer but a bit rusty in this as I know I didn't like follow up, like do like more development. So that time I had to pick up, we really pick up a game because um, Rusty did like, because after like 
couple of years after the orbiter. So I picked up on the on the job. And as someone like that, after a while, like, because they want to switch to a new uh, technology, then uh, they saw the, there's a new technology called Meteor JS, which is uh, based on Node.js. It's a full stack JavaScript. So what? Uh, so my CTO will write me that, uh, do, you, do you think it's a good technology? Okay, say, uh, yes, yeah, no bad, full stack. So I give you this task, uh, you learn this programming language and help me build a new technology, a new website. Then I'm okay. Yeah, so he's, he gave me his whole company resources just for me to build a new website. So from there, I pick up uh, together with my product design, uh, product, product designer team. So we, we start learning major GS on the on a go. As we as we learn, we build uh, the websites from scratch. So we look everything scrapped from the Python. We just scrap down and we build again. So this is something that I have an opportunity to build something that's very realistic that can be applied to the company, and I get to learn because I build from scratch. So this is the platform where it's using Visual JS. Uh, so right now this is using React JS. Yeah. So so this is something that you can learn, like not just like you learn Orbiter. After Orbiter, you can be applied because. Because whether you want to apply for NOC, whether you want to go to any you want to apply for company, you can use Orbiter as your yeah, chip. As chip say that I did this, this is your very first. If you don't have any you don't have experience in building a prototype or building a full fetch system, I think Orbiter is a very good uh, stepping stone because you can use that as a resume, whatever, you can apply. That you'll say interesting, at least you got something to show. So this is something you should uh, I think to consider. So as Outside my career, man, I'm traveling, so I participate in multiple hackathons. Because in, in the US, there's ev almost every week has a hackathon. So, what good thing a hackathon is, there's a free food. So, every day, we so save money. Lah. So, every day, I just go there. Like, even I don't win or win, I just learn. At least I give something, I get working, and also get free food. Because in New York City, very expensive. Yeah, so, that's why I try to save money to go to this event. But it's free, so let's go. So, that's something that, and also, uh, I apply what I use, what I learned in Orbiter and just use in Hackathon. And yeah, the result is pretty good. Yeah, so that's all I have for this. Thank you. So, uh, I think you've heard from uh, Mingyan and Jason about their successes. You know, Jason is from IS, Mingyan is from CS, so it's really our whole school is eligible. Okay, and like they've been emphasizing, this is a, a chance that we offer to you to teach yourself something. Uh, I think it's a really powerful message that you can send to potential employers and also to yourself, you know, that you can pick up whatever you want to. You, you just have to put your initiative and your full weight behind it and then you'll get something done, okay? And I think NOC and, uh, you know, startups worldwide, they see that as very meaningful. Like uh, ming -An said and, and Jason said, there are coding boot camps out there that cost literally 20,000 US to take, you know, three months worth of courses. But they don't teach you anything more than you can teach yourself. Let's be honest about that. All the information that you need to become an employee at a startup, start up your own technology company, to work for a big NMC like Facebook or, or Google, you can find it out there on the web. Okay? So do yourself a favor. Sign up for Orbital and try it out. Okay? Now, you heard from some of the very best in Orbital, but I can guarantee you, even people who completed just the beginning level, meaning just build a simple web application using Python and Google App Engine, they find that they can do a lot more because they realize the potential of their discipline, okay? That they can reach out and figure out how to code on their own, okay? With that, uh, we will stop the briefing, and I will take, uh, we are all here to take your questions up front. Uh, so, we hope to see you on the registration portal and on the 9th and 10th of May. Okay. Thanks a lot. Uh, for the summer, I yeah. would need to attend a summer school. Will it be fine that I work with my, my friend?